Welcome to the Lemon Tube Amiga Workbench Guides. This video was made possible by our sponsors on Patreon. If you'd like to support these videos, why not check out our Lemon Tube Amiga Club subscription page, where you'll find all the latest perks and freebies. In this part, we'll be checking out how to install Directory Opus onto our newly created PC hard drive and I thought in my infinite lack of wisdom that this file is the latest one, the latest Amiga compatible version which is available on this particular website. So what I did is I downloaded this thinking that it was going to work but unfortunately it requires a workbench that we simply haven't got. Whilst we're here we're also going to download something else that we're going to need from the Aminet, our favourite file repository, this is LZX and LZX is another one of those decompression tools you'll find on the Aminet most of those are LHAs but sometimes they're LZXs as well so we might need that so on our Amiga side let's copy those over Let's copy those archives into our temporary directory on DH0. You can see they're both there. And so LZX. We're going to need to extract that. It's an LHA file. So we're going to need to extract that using LHA so that we can access LZX and install that. So let's just type that in. LHA. Well, first of all, let's make a destination and it looks like we've made a directory called T so let's see if that works and there is a way to specify the output directory and to make sure that that goes into where we want it to go and if you don't do that then it won't you can see no files are extracted and that's unfortunate but we will get back to installing that in a minute so let's go back to the Aminet and let's see what else are we going to download whilst we're here so that's another file downloaded and so let's try that LZX we're now extracting that file that's LHA22 so that's the latest version of LHA we can now copy LHA hopefully to the C workbench C and that will update the LHA that we installed before and now we still need to figure out how to extract the LZX so what we're going to do is delete the LHA and yes I usually rename delete to Dell so let's delete that and now we can extract the LZX archive to our current location and the easiest thing is to copy this into its destination location and then you can extract it into that location without having to put the directory switch on the end of it so what that's done is extracted that to our root directory which isn't too much of a problem for now and yet again it's asking us which version of LZX do we want to install so we have the triple OEC version which is recommended for multi-boot systems we also have the all 20 version here and the all 40 as well if you have an Amiga 4000 so let's see what I decided to do in this particular case I'm going to have to copy LZX and I'm going to have to get that name precisely right because this is the long name from the archive so it looks like we're copying the EC version over we're going to rename that to LZX and we're going to copy that into our C directory as LZX so whenever we type LZX in now it's not going to work because it needs a key file but after we've copied that key file over that should now be installed so let's copy LZX key file which should be there and let's copy that into the L directory because it needs it in L so now if you type in LZX it should come up so there it is in L and if we type in LZX it now comes up with all the information that we need all the commands and switches that we need to operate LZX so that's that installed we're not going to need it 
for this particular video but having installed that will come in handy so this is the file that we got off the website 417 pre 21 and we can extract that into this destination drive but unfortunately that did not work on this particular setup so extracting that in this particular case was a waste of time but there is a backup measure and the backup is to download the version which was released on C Omega cover disc 100 and 100 you can see it's there we can download it from this site and then that will download as an ADF file we then put that into the ADF slots in the emulator and it will say a copy of C Omega disc 100 because in their infinite wisdom they've compressed that directory opus into an archive on this disk and we can't run this disk to uncompress it without the explode library so what does that mean well we need another library from this disk and we also need the DMS file which is yet another extraction tool for extracting DMS compressed files so if we do a DIR we can see D opus DMS so there it is we've got the explode library and the power packer library that we're going to need i definitely recommend copying those over individually and definitely do not copy over all of the libraries like i'm doing because this is an old disc it's probably workbench 2 libraries that i'm copying over and overwriting and i'm supposed to have workbench 3 libraries installed on the setup so definitely copy those individually and don't copy those all over in one go and only overwrite what you haven't got or if it's an old version so in the c commands we're going to need uh let's see what we've got icon j is a new command let's copy that over straight away and we've got ncli we haven't got go workbench which is not compatible with cloanto roms but that's supposed to shortcut that if you're not running the client or rom it's supposed to go workbench and low workbench but the main reason why we're here is to copy the dms command over and you can see the workbench 1.3 echo command is in there in lowercase and there's also pp more which is a text file viewer and so let's check it out rds this is an IFF file converter, converts it into a random dot stereogram. So maybe that loaded the images, the clip art of this disc, and we're not going to need that. So let's see what we've got. We've now copied the files that we need to extract the DMS. So hopefully if I now double click that, it will find the explode library in libs and it will find DMS as well. So what that's going to do is extract the entire thing to RAM and then it says important please insert a blank disk to extract all of this onto a blank disk. So for that let's return back to press F12 and get back into the configuration menu. From here you can click on the disks tab and fast file system we can have that switched on because we're using the Amiga 1200 and just a normal 3.5 inch disk and then when we click on create it's going to say uh, what do you want to call it so let's call this cu cu2 and this is directory opus and then from there let's eject the disk which was in there and let's put in our new blank we can tap that in and it will find it and that's our new blank disk so let's just see if that blank disk has been inserted so we can minimize this window can move this close this down and it says DFO busy that means it's waiting for us to press enter so let's press enter and it will now unpack the contents of C Omega disk 100 finally after almost 10 minutes of this video we're finally extracting the contents of that disk onto a blank disk and then when that's finished it will say please insert C Omega 100 again I'm not interested in that because that's just deleting a temporary file and you can see a nice multicolor icon as well if you happen to be running multicolor mode 
of which we will return back to the multicolour icons a bit later on. But it's saying attempting to load directory up as it can't load it off the disk, which is a shame unless you boot off the disk in the first place. So let's check out that disk, it's in DFO and disk floppy zero. Let's do a DIR and it will load up slowly the contents of that disk. So we're going to manually install this now onto a hard drive and so it's the usual routine we need to copy the libs over and the commands and in this case also the modules and the utilities so let's have a look in L is just the RAM handler which we've got already we don't need that CD libs we need the ARP library and the Diopus and the Explode library we've got the Icon library and the IFF library already and we may or may not also have Power Packer, but definitely the Diopus library is the critical one because that's the one that Directory Opus needs to load up. So if we copy that onto our libs, onto our workbench, that's half of it installed already. Let's check out the C directory where we have Directory Opus real time, and I think that helps with multitasking if you load that up and put that into your startup sequence so let's copy that into C and I can't see anything else in here that we need so the last thing that we need are the configuration files and we're also going to need to configure up our own startup sequence so this is the startup sequence on the disk it initializes a library it assigns T to RAM and then it looks at DFO directory opus and loads workbench. So what does initlib do? Well that copies the explode library to RAM so that, that works for DMS. We're not going to need to use DMS again so we don't need to install the explode library. And so what else have we got on this disk? Yes, in the S we also have the configuration files. I'm going to not overwrite our own startup sequence with the one off the disk otherwise it's going to break everything so what I'm going to do we can type those in manually or we can put in the usual switch to select all and all CFG files all config files are now copied over let's copy all of the help files over both of those help files should now have copied across and we also have CLA, which is another variant. No idea, but that's some kind of configuration. Let's copy that over onto our workbench S drawer. And now let's copy over the main contents of that disk. It's only going to copy the main files and it's not going to copy the subdirectories. But let's copy over the main contents of the disk to DHO DOPUS so that that will hopefully create a disk drive archive on our machine called directory opus and in there is now the contents of the disk that we've just copied over and so let's rename a drawer we've got a drawer in there and an icon directory opus 4.12 so let's copy that over and rename that so that that icon is for directory opus the director that we just copied across so that's now copied everything from that disk and it's saying I still can't do anything because well it's loaded up the configuration of directory opus that we copied into S and now that we've got this working we can check out our hard drives using this HDO we can convert that to DHO and it will list out finally the contents of our hard drive but even though we've got all this configured we still haven't got directory opus configured and that needs either sticking in the C directory or the directory opus directory in the modules subdirectory. What can we do? Well that rings a bell we're definitely going to edit that startup sequence yet again and that means that we can assign directory opus the drive that it's looking for into that place that we've just copied it into so yet again let's edit that startup sequence and let's go down to the assigns and let's add in what we need to assign so this is our current startup sequence so what we're we going to do here resident and 
let's see where we'll put the assign hopefully after all the assigns and then we can just simply type that in assign nil and we want to assign directory opus we'll put that in uppercase or uppercase d doesn't really matter we'll assign that to dho directory opus that's where we've just copied it to and then if it's looking for directory opus it will find it in there and then what we need to do is save and quit that and then in the main package we've got all these files left over it's asking us also if we insert a disk it will automatically put that into the window and ask us which directory which side that we want that to appear on you can see lots of superfluous files that we've got from all these ridiculous installations so what we're going to do at this point is to delete those through directory opus you can see a delete button on the bottom of the screen and if we double click on those it will list out the archives associated with LHA files but if we just click on those once it will select them enough for us to highlight all of those ignoring all of the info files of course then we can delete and click on all and that will get rid of all of those temporary files we've got a new icons version 4 installed we've got directory opus 4.12 which contains the broken one from the internet and directory opus we can now copy the modules from the disk remember it wanted the modules copying over it to the directory opus disk drive location so let's copy those and we also have utilities as well and so let's copy those as well into that same location it's asking us do we want to replace the icon it doesn't really matter about the drawer icon as long as we've got the utilities in there and now hopefully everything is installed we can press the C button and that will bring up the built-in configuration of directory opus and from here we can change the directories which automatically appear on the left and on the right panel so I usually like the files my files on the left and workbench on the right from here we can also change the drive button config as well we can click on the name and change that to our DHO remembering to press enter after that command has been entered otherwise it won't save it up and also in the buttons menu we can also change the number of rows of buttons I like that on three and we can also move those banks and swap buttons around so that they fit in to that three button configuration I've actually set that up to two buttons at the moment just to show you what that looks like and we can then save that config up and then what will that do that will put two rows of buttons on the very bottom of that screen and i think by clicking on the icon bar at the bottom we can swap between two banks of those and that means that we've got directory opus virtually set up now i've done a separate video on setting up and touring directory opus and you can find links to that in the description so that's that if you want my configuration it's in there we've now installed directory opus it works and it works from the icon we've installed the library and the c command as well and the path which goes in to an assign what we can also do is leave the icon out onto the desktop so that we don't have to go into the directory directory opus every time we want to run it we can leave that out and by snapshotting that once we've left it out we can now reset that machine so that the directory opus automatically is there and is runnable from that location on workbench so that's that installed on our amiga mm -hmm.